Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, MC, and so far so good as to what we are doing now. Uh, in some few minutes, probably less than 30 minutes, I will exhort us to what we are doing today, that is concerning this prayer advance and the power of the Holy Spirit that must be at work. We've been talking about a glorious rebound, a revival that we are expecting in the fellowship. And we understand that it can only take place under a strong revival. And this strong revival must be orchestrated by the Holy Spirit of God. And it will come through empowerment onto the vessels of God that are available. And this empowerment is onto service. God doesn't empower you just to go about working. But in the, he empowers you that you'll be able to offer service in the kingdom. Now, we find ourselves, especially in this nation, Ghana, at the time when a lot of prophecy had gone over the fellowship in Ghana. And it is about time that we recognize that whatever God has said that he's going to do with us can only take place through the empowerment of his spirit. And this empowerment of his spirit, how do we, how are we able to attain it? Prayer in the believer's life is a necessity. It's not an option. Any believer who doesn't pray is a waste. Believe me. And therefore, if God is about to use people in this fellowship, and you are a part of this fellowship, and you are not a prayer person, believe me, God will use you. Have that assurance in your heart. But if you decide that you are going to lift that prayer unto God, grace will be released unto you, and divine empowerment will come into your system. Where God is able to make you an effective tool in his hands. God is a prayer answering God. We don't pray because we have need. We pray because it's a lifestyle of the believer. What is the need of Jesus Christ? He prayed more than anybody. Because he must pray. We ask ourselves, even the son of God, who is God? So far as he manifested as man on this earth, Bible says the guy prayed and he prayed. What is your be if you are not praying? Because prayer, if we are to see an effective convention, world convention in this nation, then prayer must be our lifestyle. The consistency of our prayer is what guarantees and maintains our success. Believe me, whatever you get by prayer must be maintained by prayer. Because otherwise the enemy will come and take care of it. God is believing in the person who can pray because you can be able to sustain whatever he places in your hand by prayer. If you don't pray, the enemy will come and you come and steal what he has given, God has given to you. That is why the believer must be a believer of pray, prayer. Christ was, came onto this earth and constantly he was praying. Bible says, far before dawn, the guy rises up and then he was inside praying there. I remember, uh, I pray a lot by the grace of God. I pray a lot. But sometimes I do, I, my timings are mixed up. I remember one time I had a dream. And in the dream, I saw that God ministers to me a lot in my dream. In the dream, I saw that there was a woman. But the woman was like a field marshal. You know when we talk about it, with badges and those things. And then she handed me over a gun. And they told me, she told me that this gun that she had handed over to me. It's a very sophisticated gun because it can kill anybody. She even told me that it can even kill the innocent. So I must watch how I use this gun. But then when I was about to leave, then I saw that there were some two knobs, three knobs on, on top of the gun. Then she asked me, 
what is the meaning of these three knobs on the gun? And I said, I don't know. And then he pretended that he was. And I woke up from the, from the sleep. So I've been battling and battling with what this understanding of these three knobs stand for. Lo and behold, quite recently, some few weeks back, I was in service. And then there was a minister of God who came to minister. And then he called me. And then he told me that, look, young man, there is something that you must be doing. I said, what is it? He said, you pray a lot. And I said, I do. He said, there is a time that you must pray. Wake up at the mid at 12 and pray to the third hour. That is what God is telling you. He didn't know about what God has spoken to me about these three things. But God was practically telling me that I must wake up at 12 midnight and pray to the third hour. And that is the opening door for my new life. He said, there is nothing that you cannot book if you do these things. So God moves by revelation in our lives. And these revelations come by the power of the spirit of God. And therefore, you, there is the need for you to, to become a prayerful person. For God to be able to bring his revelations into your life. And that is what is able to be the catalyst. Because look, you cannot walk as a blind man. And think God will be able to use you. When I talk about a blind man, I'm talking about spiritually blind. Every one of us, persons that have spoken to us on this screen, have told us that, look, there is the new thing that God is about to do. It's with laymen like you and me. It's not the clergy. But the, we as laymen will be empowered by the Spirit of God. Like he said in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, where he's saying that he will pour out the Spirit upon all flesh. It's not about clergy. Yes, the clergy is there. They are powerful. They have their administration. They have their calling. The apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists, and the pastors. They are there. But you as a layman, Bible is saying that in these last days, he will pour out the spirit upon you and you manifest his glory. Hallelujah. Oh. Believe me, God will not do much in your life without consistency in prayer as a believer. There were these words of John Wesley. It is that without God, man can do nothing on earth. And without man, God will do nothing on earth. This is the prayer of John Wesley. Bible, the guy says that, the guy prayed uh, to the place, to the extent that where he had been kneeling to pray, there were roots in the ground. His, his, his knees were able to create holes in the cement. That is prayer. And it generated power to the extent that they said when a guy moves into town, when you meet him, he will slay you down even though he hasn't prayed because he has prayed at the backside. So, brethren, if we are to see the manifestation of power in our life, prayer must be your life. Enjoy prayer. Begin to enjoy prayer. Begin to enjoy prayer. Some time ago, when I didn't know about these things, in my early stages of life, Prayer was a burden to me. But now prayer has become an enjoyable I cannot do away with. I enjoy it. And you must not pray where we begin to enjoy prayer. I want to propose in your heart in this to receive that impartation into your life. Impartation to prayer. Look, God is able to impart it into your life. Once you come into a presence like this, where prayer is being ushered in, design your heart, say to myself, look, God, I want to be a prayer man. I want to be a prayer warrior. I want to be an instrument in your hand. I want to use you to use me to make, to impart me with the grace to pray. And I'm telling you, by the time you leave here, God will impart it into your heart. Just desire it. I know there are people, people are not praying you. I'm telling you, people are not praying. There are things, look, we, are, we, are, we have a 24-hour prayer schedule. People come and put watching. And then they are gone. They, if you, they, are, they are asleep, they are snoring. Don't do. Brethren, let us avail ourselves and, to prayer. And when we say we are praying, let us be praying. Let us not put watching there. And then go and sleep somewhere. You have to pray and ask for the release of the spirit of God into your life. 
Because it's the Holy Spirit who will be able to bring revelations and directions into your life. I remember some years back, when God in my dream, like I tell you, I, I, I have a lot of dreams with God. And then I was handed over two shoes, black and then white. And I said, what is the meaning of these two shoes? And then the Spirit of God told me that God has called you and that he's saying, as far as he said, you are a battle axe in his hand, you are a seeker also in his hand. When, when they said a seeker, at that time, I couldn't understand what is a seeker, a seeker. Before I went to see, search it up. And then I realized that a seeker is used for harvesting. And so God was telling me that he had made me in such a way that I will be a battle act to destroy what is evil and to harvest what is good. And these things don't come with you. It comes by prayer and prayer and prayer for you to be a tool in the hands of God that he will be able to use you. So brethren, let's propose in our hearts that we shall be men and, and women of prayer for God to be able to make manifest his counsel in our lives. Now, there are attitudes that we need that is able to make our prayer effective. Because we don't just pray. Your prayer must be an effective one. And there are some few things that I've listed here that I will, I will admonish that you put into your heart for your prayer to be an effective one. One, you have to have the consciousness of getting an answer to your prayer. You have to get, have that consciousness that this prayer I am praying, there will be an answer to it. And therefore, you are able to wait. In this our season and time, people are not able to wait on the Lord. Everything must come instant. So they come and pray a two minutes prayer and then they expect an answer. And sometimes when their prayer answer hasn't come, they run away. They don't pray about it again. But any time you are praying, have an expectation that God is going to answer you. And therefore, you are able to wait on God. Now, how many people are able to do that waiting? There are people who, when they have prayed two, two minutes, then they forget about it. They said there is no need to repeat a prayer. Who told you that? In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, what was he praying about? Death for the cup to pass away. He prayed for three hours. Was he not repeating himself? So you can pray about one thing and be consistent about it. That God, I am holding on to you. Jacob was able to contend with the spirit of God for his name to be changed, to become Israel. He, he, he contended with the spirit of God from, from, from midnight to dawn. Because he must get an answer. And that is what must be our attitude when it comes to prayer. You just don't give up. Like I said, I like dreaming. I had another dream some time ago in my early stages of Christianity where I saw in the dream that there was a computer screen and people come into the, to face the, the screen. And when they come, they speak to the screen and then they leave. The fellow who went before me, he came with his family. He was driving some black car. And then he went to the screen. He went and spoke and he left. When I went to the place, then I saw that a key dropped from under the, the, the screen. And I saw that all over the place was spread a lot of keys. All plenty keys lying under the screen. Then I, when I woke up, I was asking the Holy Spirit, what is the meaning of this? He said, look, any prayer that you come to pray, depending on what you want and the intensity with which you pray, the answer will come. But whether you are waiting for it or not, so you see this is when Bible talks about key, it is revelation. Because there are certain things in your life that you are contending with. Unless the Holy Spirit gives you a revelation about it, you will fight about it and you will never be able to get it. Because there is a door by which you must enter a place. If you are not shown that door, you will never be able to enter that place. That is the reason why the Holy Spirit must bring revelation into your life. To be able to know that this is what is going to happen. And it comes by prayer. 
and it comes by waiting. He said, you see all these kids lying there. The people, they came and prayed. The answer had come. The revelation had come, but nobody is there. They are not there. He said, the man that just left, his key is just what the one that dropped. He is gone. So how is he going to get a revelation? To get the access to what he must get. And that is the reason why we must learn how to wait before God. For him to be able to bring answers into our life. Hallelujah. And you must have the right motive. The right motive. The right motive. James chapter 4 verse 3 says that we pray and we pray amidst. Because we are praying for the last two things of our life. The one who created you. Have you ever gone to God and asked him, God, what will you have me do for you? But every time you go, you are praying for something that must come into to you. For God to be able to bless you. For God to bless me, bless me, bless me. In what way are you blessing God? And that's the reason why sometimes we get, don't get answers to our prayer. Number three, don't have doubt about the answers to your prayer. James 1, chapter 1, verse 6 and 8 says, Whoever is doubtful, it's like the wind that is tossed, water that is tossed by the wind. You are, you are unstable in your wish and don't expect to get anything from God. So be consistent. Have it in your mind that this is what God is about to do in your life. And as a result of that, it shall come to pass. Jesus Christ is the access code to our prayer. Jesus Christ is the access code to our prayer. Pray in the name of Jesus and the answer will come. Pray, believe that that name. He said, neither too have you not asked anything in my name. But now ask anything in my name and I will do it for you. So recognize that the name of Jesus is an access code that is able to get us into where we want to be and use it constantly. Call the name upon Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus and God, he will bring it to pass in your life. Now it comes to fervency in prayer. In James chapter 5 verse 16, it says, we must, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails a lot. If there are certain troubles in your life, eh, you battle with it as an individual and you might not get an answer to it. I remember many years ago when I was working with a certain boy. He was a staunch Christian, a Pentecostal Christian. Then one day I went, I visited a, a seminar with him. I, with, with him. When we left the seminar, then he asked me, there is something I want to share you, Sam. I haven't shared it with anybody in this world, but I want to share it with you because the Lord is saying, I said, what is it? He said, you know something? You see the way I am a Christian. Eh? There is a certain thorn in my flesh. I haven't told anybody. There is a lady that I moved with many, many years ago. And I have ended. I have married. But, son, you see the way I am that you see me piled like this. There is a time that a visitor comes. When that visitor comes, there is nothing I can do. I'll go and sleep with that. Say, what? You? Then he said, so how can you help me? And I told him, you are liberated today. He said, how? I said, because you confess it. He says, confess your sins to to one another. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous are built. I'm praying for you today. From today onwards, you are free. The guy testified later, years after that. Look, son, so is that the way God works? From the day you spread this easy prayer, not even two minutes prayer, and you release me, I am liberated. That is the power of God. So we need each other. And it is through the power of prayer. Because the understanding is there. That there are certain things we cannot handle by ourselves. Confess your faults. Confess your sins one to the other. And he says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails a lot. It's able to break yokes in our life. So if we are going to do, we've been talking about unity, about love, and a whole lot of things. This is the time that God is going to use us to bind us and bring us to that place of excellence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Paradosis Eleni. Next. You must offer thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Philippians 4 6. He says, We must not show anxiety. We must not be anxious. But in everything, in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you must know how to be thankful unto God. Before you go ask God for anything, thank Him for what He has given you already. 
before you ask God for anything, thank him for what he has given you already. And that is what is able to bring the difference in your life. These are the things, strategies that when we use, they are able to bring answers into our life. And we are able to experience the power of it. Look, unless God empowers us, we will not be able to achieve this game that we are talking about. And now the next thing, do not murmur. Do not murmur before God. When you are taking things to God, tell him what your request is. Don't go and complain. Tell him what you need. And then he's able to bring it to pass. The Bible says that in Numbers chapter 14, 26 to 29, after the people have gone uh, into the, to search the land, and Aaron and uh, Caleb, they came, and then they were testifying positive. The others, the thing, they were talking negative. And God said something. That thing I feared it. He said, look, tell these people, as far as I live, and God won't die, believe me. He says, as far as I live, the things I have heard them remember into my ears, that is what I'll do to them. He slayed them all in the wilderness. He killed them all. Because they were saying they were looking for grace in the wilderness. So God buried them all in the wilderness. Brethren, let us know how to make positive confession. In the midst of the turbulence that is going on now, in the midst of the difficulties that is going on, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. That is the difference between you and the one in the, in the world there. That is what is able to bring the difference in our life. And God is able to bring into manifestation the things that he wants us to do. Hallelujah. A pure life is able to make a lot of difference in the believer's life. As for this one, I'll read it. First Peter chapter 3, verse 12. First Peter chapter 3, verse 12. Let me read it quickly. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 3, verse 12. It says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and he hears, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. If you are a child of God and you are comfortable in doing evil, God's ears are close to your prayer. That is what he's telling me. He says the eyes, the, the eyes of the Lord over the righteous and he, he, his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So brethren, let purpose in our hearts that henceforth we are not going to walk according to the evil ways of the world, but we will walk a righteous walk before God. And that is how God is able to bring into manifestation the things he has purpose to do in the life of the people. Now, the next one. If you are here and you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is high time you do it. You know something? In our churches, everything that they must have done, he had talked about the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us. But in our churches, I have seen day in and day out, there is no Holy Ghost uh, baptism. There is nothing. The fellow comes and then he's taken through some... And then after that, they pin him. They pin him. And therefore, there is no baptism. There is no active service without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The disciples, they walk with Jesus for three years. But when Jesus Christ was about to die, he said, look, this nothing, nothing kind of thing, you cannot stand before Satan with it. If you are to make a difference, there must be a baptism on your life. And therefore, there is a necessity for that baptism. If you are here, you don't pray in tongues, you are losing something. And let us spread it to our chapters. Let us preach. Let us minister the baptism of the Holy Ghost upon every member. That we will speak in tongues. Beat the enemy. Satan doesn't understand that language between us and God. And as a result of that, God is able to do what he wants to do with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now the last one. You have to pray and fast. Pray and fast. Pray and fast. Keep in mind. That the core business of this business that we have is about souls 
and it is done through the manifestation of the power of God. When God is talking about a glorious rebound or a glorious revival, all that he's saying is we will manifest the power of God. If we don't manifest the power of God, it is like being another club. Who goes who will be like a club? Another of the club. But we are not a club. We are the body of the spirit of God that is at work. So let us have it at the back of our mind that between you and me and whoever is sitting here and in our chapters, we are supposed to manifest the power of God, work miracles, do signs. In every meeting that we should go, there must be a demonstration of the power of God. The eye of somebody must be open to see something. There must be a healing in that place. There must be deliverance. There must be a turnaround. A captivity of somebody must be broken. A yoke must be broken. A burden must be lifted in any meeting that we have in the place of God. Brethren, I thank God for allowing me to share this little word with you. It is short, but it is loaded. And I'm pleading that these things that I've spoken is so ordinary. Put it into your heart. God is going to make a manifest of great and tremendous in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen.